typical laser power sensor can measure powers over many orders of magnitude. For example, the Ophir PD300 UV, a photodiode-based sensor for UV and visible wavelength beams, can measure powers from as low as 20 picowatts up to 300 milliwatts. However, if we consider the electronics inside the power meter, one stage of amplification will typically have a dynamic range of maybe several tens to one. So the usual approach is to divide the overall power range of the instrument into several scales or ranges. We use those two terms interchangeably and thereby achieve a useful overall dynamic range of the power meter. For example, looking again at the Ophir PD300 UV, here you can see the scales into which the measurable power range is divided. The user can select the 30 nanowatt scale, the 300 nanowatt scale, and so on. They're quite typically configured to be one order of magnitude apart and the user selects the appropriate one for the expected measurement. Sometimes, though, we don't know what to expect. We don't know whether the power is going to be high or low. So, note the option called Auto for just such a situation. In Auto range mode, the meter starts off on the least sensitive scale. If it doesn't find a useful signal, it automatically switches to the next more sensitive scale and so on until it finds a signal and then it stays on that scale and measures. Also, if it's in the middle of measuring and then the signal increases to more than 100% of the range, it automatically moves up a range. And if the signal drops to below a certain percentage of full scale, it automatically moves down a range. It's very convenient. However, sometimes it can do funny things. Let's look at two interesting cases that we recently dealt with. The first has to do with logging or recording of power measurements. A customer was measuring a low power beam using a photodiode-based sensor connected to the Centauri meter. They were logging the data using the meter's fast power mode in which the power is sampled and the data logged at a fast sampling rate of 10 kilohertz. In regular power measuring mode, the meter samples the signal at 15 hertz. Here you can see a snippet of the recorded data. The timestamps are in units of milliseconds. As you can see, the data points are spaced, as expected, around a tenth of a millisecond apart. And then suddenly, here it's about 22 milliseconds. So we asked the customer for some actual logged data. From the data log, we saw that the range had been set to auto. When the range is set to auto, it takes the instrument a certain amount of time to find the best range. During those time gaps while switching ranges, there is, of course, no measurement data. In other words, in auto range, there will very likely be time gaps during which no measurement takes place. If one works in a fixed range setting, this shouldn't happen. In general, though, it's most likely not a problem once one knows what it is. The second case has to do with overshoot. This time a customer was measuring several watts of power with a thermal sensor, in this case the Ophir 30A BB18. As the power of the beam changed, they found that sometimes they saw a bad overshoot until the reading stabilized at the new power, and other times they did not see such an overshoot. So we again asked for a data log file to help us diagnose the issue. Here is what they had measured. Now the power ranges defined in this sensor are 30 watts, 5 watts, and 500 milliwatts. And of course, auto range. In the log file they sent us, we again found that the range was set to auto. This means that the power meter starts on the 30 watt range, the highest, least sensitive range, and then, if it doesn't find a good signal, scales down to 5 watts and then to 500 milliwatts. Our suspicion was that the meter reached the 5 watt range, so 4.5 watts was measured smoothly, but then when they increased the power to 6 watts, the meter automatically switched up to the 30 watt range, as it's supposed to. And one of the byproducts of that range switch is that we can sometimes see that big overshoot. We asked the customer to test 6 watts 
after manually setting the range to 30 watts, not auto range. And in fact, there was no longer that same overshoot. So the bottom line is that auto range is a very convenient feature, but it's helpful to understand how it works so that some of the possible side effects won't take you by surprise. To learn more, contact Ophir directly via your local Ophir representative or visit our website.